to conclude this section on lumbar disc degeneration, and once again, these are all terms that can be used interchangeably, but I just want to show you what's meant by a couple things, and here you see them. End plate spurs, modic changes, end plate changes or irregularity, decreased disc spacing, and then disc space collapse. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is all these things, although often asymptomatic, can affect the load-bearing capabilities of the spine. You'll often see these mentioned in your MRI report. I just want you to know what they are. So first, let's take a look at a model that you've seen before. And on the left right here is a normal appearing side view of the low back. Right here is the vertebral body, right here also, and in between is the disc. We've talked about that. On the back uh, is the facet joint, and in the area right here is the foramen. Now, this entire area right here is called the functional spinal unit because that is where all the action takes place. And in another portion of my spine cam program, I get into how the spine functions and what it does, and I show you how that functional spinal unit works. But that's not for here right now. Now, what we're going to be looking at, and it'll be represented by this model on the right here, again, you see a top view of the low back with the disc, the inner nucleus, the outer annular fibers, which here are showing some annular tears, the spinal canal, here, the nerve that passes through the opening called the foramen, and the facet joints on the back. Now, what you see right here is a normal disc, and then down here would be termed a degenerated disc. This could be represented or called disc space collapse or decreased disc height. Notice that it is much smaller than the one above it. And the end plate irregularities would be just above and below the disc where the end plates are. Those end plates, as you recall, are important because they help with the nutrient supply to the disc. And when those end plates become irregular, it does affect the nutrient supply. On the back here are the facet joints, which can also have structural changes called facet joint arthropathy. I'll show you that in a moment. What I'm also going to show you is how as these disc spaces decrease in height or collapse or whatever it's called. It can decrease the diameter that the foramen requires to allow the nerve to pass through it without being compressed or irritated. So let's first take a look at what these things look like on an MRI scan and then I'll get back to that chart that you've seen time and again and illustrate once more how often they're seen in asymptomatic people. Since most of the terms that I just discussed are interchangeable, I'm going to go over them just using one slide so that we don't take too much time. <clears throat> Again, on the left side here you see the model where you have a normal disc right here, a slightly uh, decreased height in a disc, and this would be called bone on bone, and here are the bone spurs decreased spacing or bone on bone can often be called a thinned disc as well. I just want to show you what it looks like here on the MRI and let's move over to it. Here you would have a relatively normal disc. The bright signal inside indicates hydration. You notice here this is darker. We talked about that being desiccation. You also know that that's a little bulge back there. This disc is decreased in height more than the one above it. Now, when you're dealing with bone on bone, you would basically see this space collapsed. And as I've mentioned, that is often a term that's used in an MRI report. Often you'll see what are called modic changes. And this little bright area here that I am circling with my arrow is a modic change. It's just another finding that is mentioned when a disc is felt to be degenerated. Now, over the last several years, there's been quite a bit of research written about modic changes, 
And many people feel that when you see these modic changes, it can indicate a disc that is symptomatic, meaning that any pain you'd be experiencing could be coming from that disc. As with everything else, it's not absolute, but the science seems to be leaning in that direction, and that's also something that I feel is reasonably accurate. So, in review, we've got the modic changes, the desiccation, decreased spacing. You've got the bone spurs right here. Cannot really see them well on the MRI. And then you have the normal disc. All of these things are seen in asymptomatic individuals, but they can be associated with pain as well. Again, the important thing to recall is they do affect the ability of the spine to distribute and manage load. So in a disc or a spine like this, it would seem logical, and again, this is also a belief that I adhere to, that it would take less force to cause pain to occur in a spine like this. That doesn't mean you should be inactive, because when you're inactive, that actually increases your susceptibility to pain. And the proper activity, using smart movement, can go a long way towards maintaining the healthy function of the spine. And that's what the whole Spine Camp program is about, is learning how to use smart movement to not only alleviate pain, but to prevent pain from becoming a recurrent problem. But that's for the whole program. That's not the point of this discussion here, which is focusing on just MRI abnormalities. So here we have the conclusion of what you see when you're dealing with degenerated discs and let's go back to that chart again and just see how often they occur and right up here now it's not the area that I have encircled in red but just above it notice disc degeneration of some form is seen in 37 percent of 20 year olds 52 percent of 30 year olds 80% of 50-year-olds, and 96% of 80-year-olds. Remember, those are asymptomatic people, people without back pain. And the same numbers hold true for decreased height or disc space loss. So just because you see it doesn't mean it's problematic, but logic would dictate that it would indicate the need to pay attention to what you do for yourself to maintain your spine as healthy as possible.